This video is about wiring up the controller to the GUI using JavaFX here. So we've got our pig dice game. We're all set. Now we need to say what happens when I click roll and hold. How do I get numbers into these spots and how do I actually see my die over here? So let's see if we can make that happen. We need a new Java class. Let's call it the pig controller. And what it is going to do is we are going to have, uh, definitely we need to have an initialize method. Public void initialize. And that initialize, we're not really gonna call the constructor on this controller. It's gonna call this initialize method. So. The things that we need up here to keep track of things, these are our data fields of the controller. We need a model. We spent all this time making our model. We need a game. And what are we going to do inside the initializer? We are going to say pig equals new game, player one and player two. Okay. Is not happy with the game because it's in a different package, so we got to go import that one. Perfect. Well, this gives us the model that can be then worked on by the GUI to make the interactions happen. So, in order for any of that to happen, first we have to go back to Scene Builder. We have to say, hey, Scene Builder, don't forget there's a controller. Where is that controller? Well, it's here, but I'm going to close this down and then open it up. And in doing so, it refreshes it and says, oh, hey, look, there's a controller. I would like to use that class. And now it will be connected. When it's run, this game will initialize. And just to show us that it's working, the uh, game was made. Okay, so if we actually run the pig app, this is a test for us to make sure that things are working. We see our GUI and we know it's connected because the code that we just wrote, the game was made over there in the controller, was output down here in the uh, output window. So this is a great way for us to test that things are working. So let's make it work. These are all the pieces that we need. If we go back there to Scene Builder, we can say, what do we want to interact with? We want to interact with this text field, or this yeah, text field, text field, text field, these buttons, and the image view. And since we know exactly what they're named over here, text field, image view, button. This is where we get to go control all those things. The FFXML connections. Okay, so I definitely want to have an image view. We're gonna call it the die image. Now it says, I don't know what that is, so I can import the class. And here you will find an old way older way of making uh, GUIs was called Swing. Don't forget to pick the ones that are Java FX. That's what we're dealing with right now. Okay, and in order to make the annotation work, in order for them to show up in Scene Builder, I need to put this at FXML annotation above them. So now I want to do it for, let's do it for the buttons. button, import that class for button, xml, button, hold button, and now I want to do the text fields, player one, turn, it says, wait, you have multiple choices here again. What do you want to do? 
always get the FX one, Java FX, cool. So here, I am going to carefully copy and paste them. And it says, oh, well, I could do player two turn. I could do player one total. And I could do player two total. Okay, so this is great. I have all of these things here, but none of them are being used right now. Notice that they are gray. Even though they're annotated, even though we made them, we didn't connect them yet. Okay, but because we know this is our controller, what can we do? We can select that object, go to the code spot, and say you are the die image. And we could say you are the roll button. You are the whole button. You are player one's turn. You are player one's total. You are player two's turn. And you are player two's total. Okay, if we save that, don't forget, you've got to have that blue at the top. Changes saved in order for things to start being connected over here. And look, we have this nice little annotation over here that says you are connected to your GUI, and they're no longer gray, they're purple. So a couple indicators that things are working for us. Great, so things were wired up. We have our game. Let's go ahead and set an image for us. That's going to be happening though a lot. We're going to be doing that. So let's make a, make a method down here. We're going to set the die image. Somebody's going to say, this is what was on top. How do I want to do that? I'm going to talk to my die image and set the image to be a new image object. And that image object is going to be coming from, where is it? It's inside this package called pig, inside resources, and then it's called dice plus top plus dot png. And so if I use that, oh, don't forget to import the one from JavaFX, then we should be able to find pig resources dice one dot png and be able to get that together. So let's see if we can make that work. Set die image to be whatever pig dot get die dot get top. Okay, let's see if we can run this. Ooh we did not find what we were looking for. So let's see what kind of typo I made here. Resources, resources, pig, pig, dice top dot png. The game was made, but I could not find, yeah, line 45. I could not find that spot. Okay. So, pig resources. Did I misspell it? Don't think so. And then dice top PNG. It should have zero. Well, let's go ahead and system.outlaw print line. for image, and let's go ahead and paste that all in there so that I know what I'm supposed to be getting. Okay. So looking for the pig resources dice zero dot png. So it's right there. I can see it. Why can't you see it? Okay, well, I'll take a break and see if I can figure out why. 
and I'll be back in the next video.